All right, today we're going to be talking about um, two different things, actually, um, but they both have to do with um, the measures of central tendency. The first thing we're going to be talking about is an outlier. An outlier, um, as you can see, is a data value that is distinctly separated from the rest of the data. So, for example, um, if you look at this set of data down here, we have 11, 14, 9, 1, 12, 15, 12, and 13. Now, if you were to look at this set of data, um, you would see there's one number that doesn't seem to necessarily quote unquote belong with the rest, and that would be a one. All right, but all of these other numbers are around the same one, uh, are around each other, whereas one is way far off in the distance. If you were to graph all of these on a number line, all right, I'm not going to do it all, but one would be down here, and then you would go all the way up here, and then you would have nine and um, an 11 and 15, okay? So the reason it's called an outlier is because it is literally outside the rest of the data. All right, so looking at our example here, we um, have find an outlier in the data and tell how it affects the mean. Now, if you remember, the mean is um, like the average. You add all of these numbers up and then you divide it by the number of um, the number of data you have. All right. So in this case, if we were to take all of these numbers, add them all up, which I've already done, it equals eighty seven. All right, and there are um, eight numbers here, so we would divide by eight, and we would get ten point eight seven five. So we would get ten. Eight, seven, five. All right, so that is the mean with um, the outlier, with the outlier. Now, if we were to take away the outlier and um, add all of the numbers up and disregard the one, uh, you'll see that we'll get a very different number. So let's do that now. All right, so in this case, when you add all of the numbers up, um, instead of getting 87, you would get 86. And because there are only um, seven numbers, we would divide it by seven. So 86 divided by seven is 12. Point, and I'm just going to round it to 9. All right, 12 and 29 hundredths. So as you can see, the means are very, very different. We have 10.87 and 12.29. Uh, so what this is showing us is that that outlier, even though it's a very small number of only one, it can make a difference. And outliers... Um, can change the way you look at a set of data. Um, so the 12.29 is probably a better representation of the um, data up here because it seems like it's more um, in tune with the 11, 14, 9, 12, 15, 12, and 13. The 10.875 seems a little low if you think about it logically. All right, so outliers can have a big dip can make a big difference. So our second, um, the second thing that we're going to be um, talking about um, is which um, is the best measure of central tendency. Um, there is definitely a time and a place when finding the mode, median, and mean um, would be a better um, a better option, all right, um, in the real world. You wouldn't use um, 
all three of these to analyze every single set of data you had. So in this case, um, when we're talking about the mode, it is when data is not numerical. For example, the favorite cereal. Um, you can't really calculate a mode. You are just looking at the numbers you have or the data you have. So if you have, um, for instance, the favorite cereal and we have, you know, someone said Captain Crunch, someone else said Fruit Loop, someone else said Tricks, and then we had five people who said um, Rice Krispies. Um, we could uh, we could say that the mode of that would be the Rice Krispies, whereas the median and the mean wouldn't necessarily apply to this situation. All right, so moving down to the median, the median, the middle number. Um, you want to use the median when there may be outliers. For example, in that last um, in that last example we had, finding the median probably would have been a more accurate way to, way to analyze the data because that one can throw off the mean, as you saw. All right, so, um, and the last one is the mean. All right, the mean. When there are no outliers and um, we're talking about, um, we're talking about data that is probably very close together. For example, um, the age of the students in our class. Um, you guys are all around the same age, um, and so there really aren't going to be any outliers unless you include me in your set of data, okay? Um, so that would be, um, that would be a good time to use the mean. All right, so if you have any questions, um, I know I already flashed this example. If you want some extra practice, here's a really good, um, way to, um, a really good problem to practice, um, to practice using um, an outlier and also to think about um, when it would be the best or what um, measure of central tendency would be the best.